Sorry about that. Okay, any other questions so far? Let me just get rid of this. We're gonna get back to the parallels between arrays and objects. Right, so here, what I'm doing here is I define an object with four properties, type, color, brightness, and owner. Um, if I console log apple.type here, this is before the modification. I should still see, I should see the all value, right? I see gala. Um, right, I'm console logging the apple again here. And then here I'm saying, okay, whatever I had in type, uh, just remove it and instead put Granny Smith in there. So I'm completely overriding Gala here. I'm not, I'm never changing, um, I'm never mutating this string. I'm just changing the value uh, of type or what type is pointing to to now point to a string called Granny Smith. Yeah, Douglas? Am I allowed to change the keyword? So if you wanted to change type to kind, for instance, uh, that would be, that'll be actually yeah, the next section where it is how can we add keys to an already existing object? Okay, how do we feel about this? Thumbs up, middle, down? Cool, okay. Um, this comes, this makes, this makes sense as we see it with a little bit more context and as you practice. So just know that you can create an, um, an object with, that you know it's an object because of the curly brackets uh, that you know that either key value pairs where the key is to the left of the column, the value to the right, and each one of those pairs is separated by commas. Cool. Okay, so the next thing that comes to mind is how could we create, um, how could we add a key, or, or as Dukla said, well, we cannot change once a key. Once a key is defined, once, for instance here, type, I cannot change type to be equal to kind. I could add another property, but I cannot change type. Um, what I could do is I could later on remove type completely and then add kind, for instance, to, to sort of rename it, but I'm not really renaming it. I'm just removing type entirely and creating a new one. But we're gonna see, how can we create a new key first? Okay, so we saw how we were able to access only parts of the object with the dot notation. Let's do, we are overriding here. Let's do, so this is overwrite. You use that all the time. Um, now we cancel all the apple. So, what if I want to add another key to these objects? Well, if going back to arrays, if I want to add a new element to the array, I could do something like array that push, right? Um, I don't have that right here, but what we do have is when we do apple that what would be another property of an apple that's not included here? Yep. Size. size, that's a good one. So let's do apple.size. Actually, you're gonna do this and you're gonna tell me what you see. Uh, apple.size equal, what would be a size? Just big, small, okay. Small, medium, or large, okay. That's a good example. So. Do that and then console log the apple before and after.
Yeah, Joe. It should be working, yeah. Not the, oh, I see. Damn, I'm so bad with this. So it was only streaming audio. Now it's, now it's, now it should work. I mean, if it doesn't. Okay, where were we? Let me close all this. Um, we are here. So what do you see when you do apple dot size small and then you after that we console on? Let's see. Giselle, what do you see? You printed it out small here, like in owner and then another one. Right, so, but in the terminal, are you seeing um, something like this type, color, ripeness, and then, and then size? Right, so let's see. Let's run that. Now, this is the before, only four keys, four values. After, we have five keys, five values, right? So just... The same way that I could access a property of an object here, I'm accessing the type property of the Apple object. Uh, when I try to, when I, instead of trying to access that property, I try to do apple.size of key or a, a property that doesn't exist, and I give it, and I give it a value. Uh, what JavaScript is going to do is going to add that key size um, and it's going to save that value under that key in the Apple object. So this is key size and save small into it. Is that still readable in the back? Oh. Okay. So we added a key size and save small into it. Okay. So that's how we can read, modify, and create new keys in an object. So we saw dot notation, um, then we have, we are, we saw how can we set properties in the objects. Um, again, like I said, like arrays are, they're mutable. Then for creating another key, uh, we just use the name of a key that doesn't exist yet. If we use, what is going to happen if, if I use the name of a key that already exists? So is that? Right, it will change the original value, like the way that we did here, right? And we use the assignment operator, the equal, to assign that value to that key. Um, so what happens if it doesn't exist? Now let's look at this example. We have an array. I'm going to comment all this out. Move down here. So we have, we have my array. And it has first value, second value, 
let's just change these two numbers, one and two. Actually, no, let's just leave them. So we can see that for logging the first element of the array, this should be very familiar by now. We just do the name of the array, square brackets, the index that we want, in this case, index zero. So this is going to, going to log the first value. Um, and then we could have an object where the keys, so that is a little bit more readable, let's do it like this. The keys here, uh, instead of being something like size or um, what was the other type, the keys themselves here now are numbers. So a number could be, uh, a key could be a word like color or type, but it could also be a number. It's like zero and one. And what we have here is if we do a console.log my array at index zero, we see first value. And if we use this other notation to access keys in an, in an object called the square bracket notation, see that it's very similar to, it's exactly the same as the, for the one for arrays. Here I'm still saying the same thing, which is my object at key zero or at property zero. Now when I run this, I see the same thing, right? First value, this first value is from the array. This first value is from the object. So this is the other notation. So let's go back to, since this is kind of a weird notation is we could access keys of an object through dot notation or through the square bracket notation. So let's go back to this example. We have this. So this is the dot notation. So through dot notation. Um, I'm gonna comment that, but I could still, I could do it with the square bracket notation if I do through bracket. If I do something like, I'm gonna copy this line, uncomment that, and then instead of the dot notation, the square bracket notation is apple a key type. Right, let's see, let's see this working first. Um, let's comment these two lines. And let's comment this console log. So we have, we have our original apple. We are saying apple at key type now be equal to Granny Smith. Yeah, Peter. That's correct. We're going to see why in a second. So if I do this again, now remember that our type started with Gala. Now we can see that effectively our type changed to Granny Smith, right? So this line worked. Um, so this Let's see what happens if we don't. So I remove the quotes from type. Now my code is breaking and it says reference error type is not defined. So what is this, where have we seen these all these kind of errors before? that something is not defined. Variables, right? So what happens here is JavaScript is trying to find a variable called type. Um, but there's no variable here. I never say let type equal something, right? Never in my program I said that. Uh, so JavaScript doesn't find it. 
and then it complains saying type is not defined. Type is a variable that doesn't exist. Uh, something I could do is, and we we might want to use, um, we, we might want to put the key in a variable and then use the value of that variable as the key to our object. Uh, for doing that, we could do something like let key equal type. This is the key that I'm interested in. And then here I say key. I will add this key. What is this key? This key is type. So if I try to run this again, now it should work just as it did before. Yeah, Peter? Um, that's that's a um, kind of a weird case where we can see here that I'm not using quotes around zero here. But if I think if I try to do console.log um, JSON stringify my object, I think it might put quotes around it. This JSON that stringify so that we instead of console logging it like this, it will console log in a format that's called JSON that allows us to take data from my program, for instance, uh, send that data over the network, and have another program uh, understand that data. If I try to send this data over the network, um, my program is, uh, or the, the receiving program is not going to be able to understand it. So this is just to see if we, if it puts quotes around zero, let's see. That way, we got to save. Right, so we can see that now it put, it did put the quotes around the keys. It is, most commonly what you have is, your keys are going to be strings because well, if we think about again, the purpose of the object is to model the real world in our in our computers. Um, I find very few things that have a property zero and a property one and a property three in the real world, right? In the real world objects have height, width, material, name, stuff like that, right? But um, that is, this is just to demonstrate the similarities that we have between arrays and objects where the square bracket notation works for both. And if we, if we think about it, on arrays, we have, in this is right, we have zero to however many elements we have in the array. In objects, we don't have any length. If I try to do object that length, what am I gonna get? Like if I try to do apple that length, Right? Objects, if we try to do apple dot length here, what are we going to see? I mean, undefined, why are we seeing undefined? Somebody else. Camille? Correct. There is no key in my object called length. And I don't have a value for that, right? If I don't have the key, I don't have the value. Um, that is because, well, in arrays, JavaScript is really nice and creates this key for you in the array that allows you to access the length of it because, well, for arrays, it's really handy to know how many elements it has. Uh, you'll, you could think that, well, it will still be good to know how many keys we have. Um, and we're gonna get to, we don't have a length, but we could still uh, derive that information in with another method. So again, this is to say that um, the arrays and objects are not entirely that different. Um, what the point that I wanted to make is with arrays we have indices, right? And with objects we have keys. 
instead of um, indices. And those keys can be a, a string like color. Um, it could also be numbers, but we saw that those are not very effective, that, or not that they're not effective, but they're limited as to how we can model the real world. Um, what was the other point that I wanted to make? Let me check out my notes real quick. Right, so arrays don't have name properties or in the sense that we cannot access elements of the uh, array by calling their name because, well, they don't have names. They just have indices. Um, and something that is kind of hard to illustrate right now is also that arrays, arrays are good at keeping track of order, right? So here, first value comes before second value. But in, um, in objects, we couldn't say the same that type comes before color, even though it, in, the, in, the, in the code it comes before the color. Uh, that is a guarantee that we don't, uh, that we shouldn't, well, it's not a guarantee at all um, because of the nature of, of objects. And again, it is kind of hard to illustrate. I was trying to, I think I was trying to Google it, see if I could find, um, let's see, I think it was this. All right, so here is this question in Stack Overflow. Does JavaScript guarantee object property order? So we have our object here, starts empty. We have property one is equal to food. Property two is equal to bar. Uh, when you console log, this is what you see. Um, and then the question is, the question is, does it guarantee that prop one comes before prop two? Uh, and the answer is no. Properties order in objects is not guaranteed in JavaScript. You need to use an array if you want to keep track of order, right? And then this is the official definition of an object by ExpressScript, which is the, um, the standard organization that um, standardizes JavaScript. And this is, these are the guys that come with the rules. This is how JavaScript works. Um, and then in their definition, it says, an object is a member of the type object. It is an unordered collection of properties, each of which contains a primitive value, object, or a function. A function storing a property or of an object is called a method. We're going to get to those. But here, the definition, the official definitions of object in JavaScript is as it's an unordered collection of properties. What is another key that, that what is another word that I can use for, for properties in objects? Keys, right? I could also say it's an unordered collection of key value pairs, right? Right, and then there is some other stuff that we have not seen yet, which like a map. Um, but anyway, in in other programming languages, we could also actually see how uh, you can define the keys in a certain object, but they're not, when you try to console log them, they don't come in the order that you define them. Um, okay, so we saw that, and then an array, an, an object, we're gonna see an object um, an array of objects, for instance. So we said that, let's go back to the official definition. It says, yep. It can be just a random order, yeah, random. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Camille. Right, uh, it, that depends on the fact that JavaScript object keys are not uh, guaranteed an order is because of how objects work. And for that, we'll need to get to, uh, we're kind of like right now, um, we're talking into what uh, Ben Sussman described as a layer of abstraction, right? At this point, we, we don't care as to um, how internally the object works. But if we looked at how the internally held object truly works, 
we can see that that there we can find why the order is not guaranteed. Any other questions? Okay. So going back to the official definition, it says each of these properties which contains a primitive value, an object or a function, right? So a primitive value will be um, a number, a string, those, a Boolean, an object, well, we just saw what an object is, um, and a, an array is actually an object in the sense in the, in the fact that, for instance, it has a property length, just like our objects have a property color or Apple object. Um, and then here, what we can do is, how can we have object of arrays? So here's where I wanted to uh, see, actually, this is not object of array. This is an array, array of objects. This is what I wanted to gather all your objects, and let's see if this works out. So what, I, what, I'm, what we're going to do is I'm going to grab all the objects that you sent, and I'm going to put them in an array. And then we're going to see why that could uh, be helpful for us. Um, OK, let's go to GitHub. Um, I can see that uh, we have 36 forks. That's good. We should have the same amount of pull requests. So there's two of you who haven't submitted your pull request. Right, so, OK, let's go pull request. And this is, this is now where, if you are working with a teammate or even at your job, um, you're going to send a pull request. A pull request is asking your code to be combined with the original code. Um, and now for actually that merging and that um, combination of code is what I'm about to do. So for instance, here I'm going to combine Sharar's pull request with, with, with my code. So actually, let's see. Let's see first what we have here. Code only has two files: a README and my JavaScript object. Right. So that's the before we could think of. Now I'm going to go to the pull request. I'm going to. I don't. I wonder if I could do them all at once. I don't think I can. I cannot merge them all at once. Okay. So this is chars pull request. Uh, what this will look like is yourself or your teammates will check what files did you change, um, and you'll see that here. So this is this is what Charar just did, and this is actually how we read your assignments. We see what files you change. Um, so I'm going to go back here, and here I have this button, which is merge pull request. I can just hit this button. Um, I, when I do that, this is going to ask me for like a commit message, right? Similar to what we do when we we're adding and committing locally. Um, now I'm going to do commit merge. Now my repo has officially Charles code. So if I go back to code, now I see his file, right? Um, Oh, damn. I think I wanted to do this with all of you, but I, I don't think I'm going to be able to merge them all at once. Let's see. Let's see, this works. Master. Oh, no, this, this is not going to work. So I'm going to do it with uh, this kind of view. Merge this pull request. Merge pull request. Pearl. 
again, as I'm doing this, if I go back to my code, now I should see all those that I'm, that I'm adding, right? So, there's a... Okay, so I merge a couple. Um, now, if I'm, let's see where we are. I'm going to go back to my repo folder. Here, if I list, I only have my original files, right? But my remote in GitHub has been updated with the new files that I just merged. So for pulling in those files, what we do is git pull origin master. Um, and origin, origin is GitHub again. Master is the master branch, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, I think, I believe I could just still do git pull and uh, git is gonna figure out where it's going to pull from. Let's see. Right, it does know where, it, where it's pulling from. If, if git complains when you do git pull, then you, that means you need to add git pull origin master. So now, for instance, now git tells me, oh, there's a new file for Stephanie Ramirez JS, Camille JS Deja, and we can also actually even see how many lines those files have. This one has, it added seven lines, it added six, 12, so on. Okay, so let's see what those files look like. Yeah. Pulling is only pulling the updates. It's not cloning again. It's pulling. Um, it's making. It's looking at what you have um, and what the remote have has, um, and it's gonna pull the differences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I'm gonna open this, and I have all the files as we said. So. Now, my intention with this is to, because I have um, all these objects, I wanted to put them in an array as to, uh, imagine we, it, it could be a program that I could use, for instance, when um, calling on one of you to answer one of my questions, for instance, where imagine if I have all this in an array, then I could write a small program that grabs a random index from that array. And that, because each thing in the array is going to be an object that represents one of you, then that could help me pick somebody at random. So let's see if I can try to do that. I'm going to try to do that with cat, let's see. Um, and to remove my readme. Only files that have names. You don't have to follow these, by the way. But I, I want to, so cat is 